Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing, does God take sides in sporting competitions? Well, of course not. God can't answer two opposing prayers, so he'll have to listen to one side and ignore the other. Plus, there are some teams that will find a way to lose even with God's help. Why would God bother to intervene? Plus, on what grounds would God make a sports team win? Both sides are going to remain Christian after the game, so what is he gained? Even if a team from a Muslim country beat a team from a Christian country, those fans probably wouldn't convert. In reality, God isn't going to answer prayers that have nothing to do with religion, whether they are about sports or anything else. All the prayers answered in the Bible dealt with matters such as preserving the lives of righteous people, like Jacob's prayer in Genesis chapter 32 verses 9 to 11, winning God's battles, like Joshua's request in Joshua chapter 10 verse 12, or bearing children for the Lord, like Hannah's vow in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 10 to 11. Like that of humans, God's generosity has limits, and he won't answer trillions and trillions of prayers that have nothing to do with him. It would mean he doesn't really have standards. Then there's the issue of the competitor. If God makes someone win, then he's also making their rival lose. Losing a match saddens people and erases years of work, and it sometimes causes fans to become depressed or start riots. In 2 Samuel chapter 4 verses 5 to 12, David killed the people who eliminated his biggest rival, Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth and his allies were trying to end him and his dynasty, but David refused to touch him. If David didn't ask for the downfall of a potentially deadly foe, why should we ask for random people to lose one of the biggest matches of their lives? Really, what do we even gain from doing that? If we're athletes, we'll get money and glory, and if we're fans, we'll be filled with joy, but all those will fade with time. There are longer-lasting spiritual matters that are far more important, like wisdom, as shown by these verses. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Proverbs chapter 8 verses 10 to 11. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. Therefore, my advice is that we should separate spiritual matters from worldly matters like sports and entertainment. As Jesus said in Luke, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. Luke chapter 20 verse 25. Instead of praying for our teams to defeat others, we should be grateful to God that we have all these sports to distract ourselves from the world's problems, and that at least there is one domain that unites the whole world. More importantly, we should focus on the competition that matters the most of all, the race of salvation. As it was said in Hebrews, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Does God take sides in sporting competitions? No, because it would be unfair to the loser and because it wouldn't actually benefit him. Thank you for listening! Don't forget to like and subscribe!